Okay, so in this video clip, I'm going to make use of some pre-written uh, Jupyter notebooks that have been uh, posted on uh, GitHub. And specifically, I'm going to take a look at Aldo Dector's uh, GitHub page. He's quite a lot of material here, a lot in the data scientist science area, a lot of data analytics and so on, but quite a bit also in terms of um just straightforward code that automates a number of standard type estimations um, in in finance and in the um, corporate finance area and accounting. Uh, key areas that uh, finance practitioners, accountants, data journalists, data scientists might be interested in, um, particularly in areas uh, related to and modeling and risk management and so on would be valued risk, uh, Monte Carlo uh, portfolio allocation. Uh, there's a trading strategy here, Black Schultz model with option pricing and the capital asset pricing model. I'm going to take a look at the capital asset pricing model in, in particular here. And I'm going to try and just click on the link, just go into the Jupyter notebook. And then I'm I'm going to piggyback. So the the code that's available here we can't ex execute in the GitHub itself. So there's no compiler available here. But I want to take the work of Aldo Deck and introduce into my own collab, so that I can edit and share and uh, apply different uh, arguments and get different outputs from uh, the parameters that I select. Um, if we look here at the uh, code that's been set up by uh, Aldo Deck, right? Um, very nice piece of work. He explains very succinctly what the capital asset pricing model does. He imports in a number of libraries. He sets out uh, he parameterizes uh, the inputs with uh, looking at Apple stock and uh, the S&P 500. And then he takes us through how to uh, estimate the beta in the capital asset pricing model where we select the stock and the market. But even more interestingly here in terms of automation, he uses he develops a use defined function, which means once we execute our code, we can then take the function that is developed so that we can pick any stock from any publicly listed traded stocks, set our dates, and run our command to produce both an output output in terms of the return on the individual stock relative to the market and then produce the capital loss of pricing line and estimate uh, the beta and the alpha of, of that stock. Now, if you're a little bit at sea with what the capital loss of pricing model does, you might take a look here at uh, Investopedia. But in as... Um, it's a fairly standard model and it's heavily relied upon for investment decisions uh, and looking at the riskiness of individ individual stocks relative to the market. So I won't go too much labor the detail there, but quite a number of references available on the internet. What we want to do here is to develop the code generated in this GitHub and bring it into our own collab so that we can actually run the code and uh, make use of the functionality and automation available in in the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so first thing you need to do is copy the web address. So we just go up here and copy. And then I go across and set out just in the browser. Now we need to have a, a Gmail account or a Google account to open up a Google Collaboratory. And any information, any um, code that we edit here, if, if we want to save it into 
it's a cloud resource, so it saves across to our Google Drive. So I'm going to say, look, I want to open up the code artifact from the Alder Deck GitHub, and I'm using the GitHub. So in the uh, menu here, we do have a GitHub where I can enter in the URL just by pasting. So what I copied here, this URL that I've copied here, once I come to this page, I can go to GitHub, put that in the search engine, we'll search. It's already appeared, in fact. And we now have opened in our own drive, Google Drive, um, or we've opened up um, an, uh, a copy, a replica of what's in the capital loss appraising model. Now, uh, to make this our own, right, um, and to make it available in our Google Drive, I'll file and save a copy in Drive. So that means now I have editing control over uh, the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so I'll open in a new tab. And then we'll put a date here just so to identify when the work was completed. So I'll say the fifth, although it's the fourth, because I already created um, this collab for the fourth. So we'll say the fifth of September 2023. That gives us a timeline. Um, but you can put your own uh, credentials here, whatever you like, just so that you recognize it in your um, in your Google Drive. So we'll save that. And we can basically go in and edit this Jupyter Notebook and try out the code that has been developed and maybe use the code for our own automation processes. First thing to note is the formula here. So the capital asset pricing model is described in, in a fair bit of detail, but very succinctly. And we're looking at the capital asset pricing model. Typically, you know, it's the return on the stock is equal to the risk-free rate plus this parameter, this beta coefficient times the difference between the ex expected return on the market, probably the S&P 500, if we're looking at US stocks, minus the risk-free rate. If we double click here, you can observe that if we want to manipulate the formula, so we can see here we have RF or subscript F. So no need to change anything, but just for purposes purposes of illustration, I've changed this to G and you can come over here and see now we have G. Now it shouldn't be G, it should, it should be F. So I'm going to leave it as F, but you can see that I can use the pre-made markdown script and re-edit as required so I can build on the existing uh, work of existing contributors to GitHub. So the GitHubs, there's lots of um, contributors, a little bit like Kaggle, lots of contributors in that field. Um, okay. Now also, uh, as part of the analysis here, what, uh, if you go back to the original GitHub, and if we survey uh, the, the different code cells, initially, we can see we're importing in uh, different libraries. Okay, so pandas for data transformation, numpy for array operations, loading in data, taking data. The Y Finance package is a package developed to extract data from the Yahoo Finance. Matplotlib for um, visualization, Seaborn for visualization. Um, and then we specify um, stocks. So we have to make reference to the stock tickers. And AAPL here is Apple. GSPC is the S&P 500. And we set out dates for 2015 to 2018, the 1st of January. Um, and we pull in data from Yahoo Finance, the Yahoo portal, where there's a lot of data, in fact. Um, and then we 
take monthly data, we see resample, we take daily days, in fact, and we resample to be monthly and the last day of the month. And then we convert this data into returns. So we get the log returns for our data. And then um, we visualize using matplotlib. And then we estimate the beta. And the formula for the beta here is the covariance over the variance. Right. But that also could be estimated using a linear uh, regression um, technique. And we do use a linear regression here. It's um, uh, in, in terms of uh, estimating the beta. So we use variance, covariance, and then also um, we're using beta from linear regression. And just to observe that sort of um, so the covariance over the variance will produce a beta for the capital loss appraisal model. And then in the NumPy library, there's polyfit, and it allows us to produce a beta from the regression and the intercept from the regression. Okay, so to see that in operation, let's come across here uh, into our collab and let's import our libraries. So I'm following in line with uh, the Aldo deck GitHub and I'm implementing the code. Now I have to um, initialize and gain access to the Google server. So that takes a second, but it's actually quite fast executing. So we've imported our libraries. Now this possibly won't work because we might need to do a pip install on Y Finance. Actually it's come in. That's interesting. So we didn't, in fact, maybe. Uh, so sometimes you may, if you're getting a problem here, I recommend that you perform a, a pip install uh, Y Finance. But it would appear in this instance that we didn't need to perform a pip install. But I'm just putting it, it's okay. So it seems to be already satisfied, right, in the collab. So all the um functionality required in terms of importing the data from my finance um is that all those different elements have been pre-installed or and are available here right um but if you have an issue getting the data to come across then um pip install might resolve that here it worked anyway now just also to explain what do we mean by getting the data from Yahoo? If I go to Yahoo Finance and look at Apple, right? The data, so Yahoo Finance Apple, it will provide us with the current stock price and then write different charts. In fact, if we look at some of the and the summary there, we might even have the beta for the stock, this year's beta. Uh, generally, it's uh, the beta for a five-year monthly, 1.29, right? So that's the sensitivity of Apple to the S&P 500. And then the historical data for Apple, we're looking here at the first, so that's Friday. Um, First of September, 2023. And normally we have a, a year of data there. And you can observe it's daily, in fact, right? Now, if you want to download much more data, you can, but you'd have to set the time period and the, the start date, the maximum time period probably runs back maybe 40 years now with Apple, maybe more. Um, so we can set, do we want daily data? And we can set the start date and the start date could go back, um, you know, many years back to, in fact, the 19, maybe the 1980s. Okay, let's try 1980, January. And we can take, and we could apply that and then download. Now, if I go back to, if we just do one year here, and download that would come down as a CSV file. 
but we're not we automate that process and bring the data in here uh, and also bring that the ticker for Apple is AAPL. So it's sufficient using the Yahoo Finance uh, API to call up the stock ticker and the S&P 500 ticker and then bring across the data. So if we take a look at the data for uh, the stock, uh, going back in 2015, on the 2nd of January, so the, in the US, it's uh, January 2nd, January 5th, January 6th. Uh, we have the stock price uh, as being 24. Again, the start date here is 2015, 1st of the 1st. And three years of data, 2018, January 1st and 1st. So what we're doing here with the Y Finance package is we're scraping from the Yahoo Finance portal daily stock prices for Apple from this start period to this end period, a three-year term, and likewise taking the same peri uh, time period uh, for the S&P 500 and taking not all the data, not all the OHLC data, just the adjusted close, mind. And then we can uh, convert that to monthly. So going from daily data and then resampling to be monthly and the last day of the month, if we run that, we're getting the last day of January, the last day of February in 2015, the last day of March 2015. And then we can convert that to log returns. So we have the stock price data, but we also have the returns. And we would lose the first month, given that it's uh, we have a lag. So we're getting the individual stock's close price, and we're dividing it by the previous close price. Shift 1 is the lag. So we're uh, getting the log return on the stocks. So that's a daily return, uh, a monthly return monthly uh, return, just a note. And then we can generate using matplotlib a scatter graph for our data. So when we map out over the three-year period, the 12, uh, the 36 observations over the three years, uh, our scatter graph looks like this. Okay. And then to estimate the beta, we can take the covariance divided by the variance of the re market return. So the covariance of the individual, so Apple, covariance of Apple's return and the market return div divided by the covariance of the market return will give us a beta. And the beta is 1.43. And that's our traditional beta that we use as a sort of a measure of the stock price sensitivity of the individual stock to the market. And a beta in an excess of one generally denotes that the stock has a higher sensitivity, that the stock is more risky than the than the market, individual market. If we perform the same action using lin, linear regression using OLS, and I'll leave a link here with a video clip explaining it in the collab, then you can see we're getting using a linear regression. Now it's a polyfit function we're calling in from the NumPy library, and we're getting a beat of 1.4373. So if you don't have any background in linear regression or you need to jog your memory. I'll put in um, a video, some video guidance around that, uh, that you can go back and take a look at. And then we can do some more graphing here to put in the market line. So the linear regression creates a line that's best fit. And once we parameterize our alpha and beta, or our intercept and beta coefficient, we can draw a line of best fit that maps out the relationship between the S and P five hundred and the capital loss, uh, and and the stock individual stock return on the vertical axis. Okay, now uh, where we can develop this into a function. So in fact, there's a few steps here involved. 
And what we might like to do is just create a function, a user-defined user function. So this is in the spirit of automating the process where all of the detail that I've built here, all this code can be automated and set up in a single user-defined function. Okay, so the next step in the code artifact here is to generate a, a function, right? So create a function that um, pulls our data from Yahoo Finance, resamples the data so that it's monthly, not daily, and it's end of month, and then take the individual stock and the uh, market stock and estimate the log returns. And then if there's a missing row, um, drop the missing row, then estimate using um, the beta using the variance, covariance divided by the variance, and then verify the result using the polyfit uh, functionality available in NumPy to estimate the beta, and then to produce um, the regression output, and then create a scatter plot with the line of best fit going through. So if we run this function, we now have a function, a user-defined function called cap m. And if we define our stock as Apple and the market index is S&P 500 and set our dates, we just have to call in capital asset pricing model, Apple, S&P 500, the start and end. And if we run that, all the processes that we've gone through Right, so here we're going from 2013 to 2018. Let's, so we're getting a different result, right? From before, if we change this back to 2015, we should replicate the result we got before when we went through a sort of a manual process. And you can see here now we're getting 1.4373, which is consistent with the results we had obtained before when we estimated the beta of uh, Apple. Okay, now let's see if we could run another capital asset pricing model. Let's, so let's just check. Um, if I take the function here, uh, cap M, so that's the function, and C A P M, open bracket, now, we just have to be clear that the, okay, it should be capital letters. Okay, so we'll be a little bit clear about that. C, A, P, M, open bracket. And it should prompt. So we'll say uh, stock A. So we'll say um, stock A, we might... Um, use here so stock a let's get this um so, so if it's general electric i think it's ge ge um and then the market index or maybe it's easier if we in um Let's just take a look at the next example here. If we remove this for a moment, if we take, if we den, den, denote stock A as the GE, so General Electric, that's the General Electric ticker, and that the market index is the S&P 500, that's the S&P 500 uh, ticker. And then if we set our, our start date, we can change this to 2015, makes no difference. And then the function that we have here, the capital asset pricing model, I mean, if we, you know, if we 
if we copy that, let's just control C, control C, remove it. Just run this in its own right. Then put in control V, the capital asset pricing model. So if we just um, go back to the starting point here, the capital asset pricing model is invoking the function that we created, the user defined function, and it's saying, look, it's looking for stock A. So you just say stock A, right? Comma, uh, stock M, meaning the market index. Stock M is the market index, which is um s p 500 and then the start date we could put it either put in the actual date or just say start because we created this object here start and it denotes the this given uh calendar date and then uh, the end date is end and that denotes a specific date in the calendar so we'll just put in end and if we run that that code Right, so if we take this code, it'll pull from the Yahoo Finance page the S&P 500 uh, daily data, convert to monthly, convert to the last day of the month. It will also grab the General Electric stock price data from Yahoo Finance. It automates all those processes so we don't have to download manually, all being automated. And then it runs the... Uh, regression. So we get linear regression output using the NumPy library. And we also get the beta from the formula, the covariance of the individual stock uh, by the, the covariance of the individual stock and um, the market index divided by the variance of the market index. Uh, both um, uh, estimates of beta are identical. And in the, in the case here, of the intercept, we're getting a negative 0 0.013. And the this function also produces a scatter graph with a line of best fit where the slope of the line is equivalent to the um to the beta coefficient. The slope of the line here is equal to the beta coefficient. And we can see that the intercept is that negative value of negative 0 0.013. Okay, I'll leave a link to this code and to Aldo's work in the video below, uh, in the description below the video. And you can explore, there's a lot more in um, Aldo Dector's um, GitHub, like it's a really uh, a lot of very solid work here um, with areas relating to option pricing, uh, option, uh, Monte Carlo portfolio allocation, so optimal allocation of, um, of um, in, in terms of how do you construct a portfolio and what are the optimal weights that you would arrive at. And he uses a Monte Carlo technique, which is very powerful visually. And again, in terms of uh, always key to managing financial institutions, you have to produce value at risk measurement. And again, um, he implements their uh, Monte Carlo type framework, which is uh, very useful. Um, and also moving average trading strategy. And again, um, an automation technique that is uh, very, very powerful. So a, a lot of the material here I recommend uh, go have a look at. Uh, really well done. Some time series analysis, uh, machine learning, neural networks, uh, machine learning and financial markets. Uh, lots of very useful repositories. Uh, that you can go take a look at. And as a resource, GitHub is very powerful. Just lots of GitHubs with financial resources. And uh, if you're developing a code artifact, rather than developing from scratch, try to find somebody who's credible 
right? Maybe with an international reputation, uh, maybe some solid certification, um, and piggyback on those resources, and that would uh, lighten the burden of introducing yourself or developing um, a fully f uh, fledged project. Okay, let's leave that there.